Hi, it's great to be with you. Uh, my name is Adam. I'm one of the pastors at Everyday Church, and I'm just going to take us through a quick uh, devotional focus uh, on John 15. So this week we're in John 15 in our journey through that wonderful gospel. And I'm going to just start by reading a few verses. So verse one, I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it might be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. I love that in a few short statements, we're provided just the most incredible framework to view our lives. That's simple in one sense and also just enormously profound in another. It says that there is a gardener. There is a vine. There are branches and each have a place, each have a purpose, a role. But there's only one gardener. There's only one vine. There are numerous branches, too numerous to begin counting. All three parts are linked. Now, as I've thought about this passage that we're focusing on this week, the first half of John 15, I've just enjoyed considering the fact that there is a gardener tending to my life, not a trainee, uh, new to the job, apprentice gardener who's trying to learn on the uh, as he goes along, learning uh, on the ropes, but one who's been cultivating and nurturing my life from the very first moment. These wonderful um, truths that we find in Psalm 139, these these wonderful things that, that say that everything that, that I need, everything that I um, might be needing to discover in my life about myself and about my surroundings, about where I came from, where I'm going, he knows about it. The innermost desires, the, the feelings that I have, he knows about it. One who whose perspective is beyond measure, who sees past, present, future uh, within my life. He sees it all simultaneously. Who's not bound by broad, obvious seasons in my life or thrown off course when I erratically sin and take moments where I just make poor choices and, and quickly and easily do things that, that are a mistake. He's not thrown off, off course by any of those things. He regards my life and knows precisely what he's doing with it. And the key part of that plan is that I might be inextricably joined with his son, Jesus, like a fragile branch is drawn to or connected to a sturdy, established vine that gets everything it might require from that vine. My life is also given what it needs, is replenished and is grown straight from what is received from this vine. And the invitation over my life is not to strain and to struggle and, and try my utmost to keep myself going, to, to keep myself somehow attached to this vine in the hope that, the, that my life might start to get more comfortable or more successful, but to trust and believe that he is holding all things together and working all things for my good. And I'm to remain in this, that I'm to abide in it, in fact. And for those of us who remain in the love of Christ and explore um, a lifestyle that practices living like he did, a fruitfulness can be expected. Not a fruit like the world would prize, success or wealth or popularity, to name a few. But a character exchange slowly and steadily starts occurring where traits such as joy, peace, patience, self-control, kindness, start to become evident, to name just a few. And I'm thinking as I'm just considering that, what could be more wonderful? What, what more could I possibly require from God? This wonderful commitment to me, this wonderful understanding of who I am, this steadfast love, this incredible perspective he has of every aspect of who I am and where I'm going and, and what I'm about. It's just the most wonderful, comforting assurance that I can get. I want to remain in this. Don't you? Don't you want to remain in his love, to remain in who he is, to see 
what he has in store for your life come to fruition? I'm going to just ask you a few questions just to help you consider this and, and maybe try and apply it to, to your own situation at the moment. So the first thing I just want to encourage you to do, just take a moment. Just take a moment now to consider the image of a vine being carefully tended to by a gardener. What, what thought does that simple image evoke in your, in your mind? Another question, what area of your life do you feel a sense of disconnection from Jesus? Is there a particular area that you feel a lack of faith or belief in that he might perhaps somehow be absent from that part of your life? I want you to just to bring that into the front of your thoughts. Just begin speaking to him about that. And lastly, just read in Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. Is there a fruit of the Spirit that you would like to see um, newly displayed in your character this week because God is committed to developing those sort of things into your life he will do it if you seek him thank you for just allowing me to share for a few minutes I'm going to pray and hopefully you have a really blessed day as you consider these things Father I thank you that you know our lives that we can trust you in what you are doing with our lives Thank you that you haven't cast us adrift, that your plan isn't just to leave us feeling isolated or disconnected or wondering what on earth is going on. You've given us imagery that, that reveals the truth, that we can be completely joined with you. Our lives are not our own. We are part of something bigger, something greater. Jesus, you are the vine and our lives are only nurtured and made fruitful as we remain together with you. Holy Spirit, please reveal the greatness of this truth to us today for our good and for your glory. Amen.